Welcome to the Mixology Talk Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Julia. And we're the folks behind abarabove.com, the ultimate resource for craft bartenders, bar operators, and just about anybody else looking to make great craft drinks. I'm a bar consultant with more than 10 years of industry experience. And I run abarabove.com, bringing weekly articles and cocktail recipes to help you make great drinks and grow your career behind the bar. This is episode number 98, and this week, Chris had a chance to catch up with Nick Fisher from the Cocktail Chemistry YouTube channel. Nick is an expert at making difficult techniques approachable for anyone. If you're interested in things like making an ice ball cocktail, smoking a cocktail, or carving your own ice, definitely check out the show notes at mixologytalk.com slash 98 for a few of our favorite videos. Over to you, Chris. Today we have a, a real special guest on the podcast, a gentleman by the name of Nick Fisher. And uh, Nick is definitely famous in the cocktail world for a couple of things he's done. And I'd like to say hi to Nick. How's it going, man? Hey, Chris. Good to talk to you. Yeah, thanks, man. So um, for anybody that has never heard Nick Fisher, how would they have possibly come across you in the past, man? Huh? Yeah, so they probably don't know me by name, but maybe more so the YouTube channel or Instagram account I run called Cocktail Chemistry. And cocktail Chemistry is all about showcasing unique ways to present cocktails and instructions for how people can make cocktails at home. So it's um, yeah, sort of a blog, YouTube channel, Facebook page and Instagram account around uh, making cocktails. Cool. And then um, what's the Instagram handle that you, you have? Yep. Cocktail chemistry as well. So if you search for cocktail chemistry on any of those, you should be able to come across me. Perfect. Excellent. And I remember uh, the first time I uh, came across your video and if I'm not mistaken, it went viral pretty quickly. Is that correct? Yeah. So actually the... <laughs> The very first video I ever created was around how to put a cocktail inside of a ball of ice, kind of inspired by um, what they do at the aviary with their old fashioned in the rocks, right? But being able to make that at home and then sort of smash it open uh, with a little hammer. And uh, yeah, I posted that and it actually went pretty viral on Reddit, which drives a ton of traffic on the internet. And that sort of launched the whole channel. And I'm like, oh, now I guess I got to do something with this thing. So I think for everybody listening out there, they're like, oh, I've seen that video. Because it was kind of hard to escape. It was, I would dare to say, front page for, for a good portion of the day that day, right? Yeah, yeah. It got to the top of the front page of Reddit, which is sort of the, the front page of the internet. And had all these people contacting me to try to re-syndicate it and share it around. And so it was pretty exciting. I mean, it's, you know, first video made at home and... To get that kind of reception really inspired me to keep going with the channel. I remember uh, seeing it for the first time going, man, that is so clever and such a great use of equipment. And the thing I loved about it the most is just how, how clean the video itself was. Yeah, that's something I started out with and it's sort of been a focus of the channel. You know, people's attention spans are really short online, right? And so I wanted to create videos that were very focused and tightly edited and very instructional, right? So if you want to learn a technique, it's not just, you know, me talking on screen for a while. It's very much how to do it and the methods around it and the end result. And so, yeah, it's been really well received so far. Nice. And how many videos have you done since that first one? Yeah. So that first one was launched about 12, 13 months ago. So a little over a year ago. And I've got about 40 videos now across sort of a variety of different topics. So there's sort of the flashy ones like, hey, I had to put a cocktail inside of a ball of ice. And um, that sort of launched the channel. But then I had a bunch of the viewers asking me, okay, you've taught me how to do these crazy things, but how do I shake a cocktail, right? How do I make a margarita, some of the basics? And so I, I have a, different types of videos for different types of audience members. People who are just trying to get started versus some of the more advanced stuff. So we're up to about, yeah, about 40 videos, I think, so far. Uh, congratulations, man. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So um, I got a, a question I just kind of have to ask. What was the weirdest request for a video that you've gotten so far? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good question. I get a lot of, like, a lot of people who want to know how to do, like, crazy shots, right? Like a lot of, uh, a lot of like college kids who want to know like 
the cheap, easy shots they can make. And so those things are always kind of weird because it's not really on brand for sort of the, the craft cocktail sort of theme I'm going for. I'm trying to think if anything stands out as being like absolutely crazy. Actually, I'll, I'll talk about this because I've been getting a lot of requests for people asking me to make cocktails from like TV shows and from movies. And uh, I was getting a lot of requests for, I don't know if you were a big Simpsons fan, but um, how to make the flaming Homer from the Simpsons, which is a cocktail that like Homer creates from like cough syrup and a bunch of other crap that he has in his cupboard. And actually the video I'm about to push out this week is actually going ahead and doing that and trying to recreate a bunch of cocktails from that show. Starting a whole new series on recreating cocktails from like TV and movies. And I can tell you the flaming Homer is a awful <laughs> tasting cocktail. It's tequila. It is creme de menthe. It is peppermint schnapps and children's cough syrup all blended together. And he tries to like light it on fire and it's supposed to taste good in the show. It is terrible. So. Oh my God, it sounds <laughs> so bad. I know, I know. So the, the theme of this next video I'm putting out is, okay, recreate these terrible cocktails from the show, but then how can we make it better, right? And so it was, I think instead of cough syrup, I used a creme de violette for the sort of the purple aesthetic and then some Cointreau lime juice and some other stuff and then use sort of a, a little lime boat flaming for the flaming effect. So it was kind of, it's a fun video. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a new series I'm, I'm, I'm considering around recreating stuff. Oh, that's really cool, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and you get a chance to experiment and have a little bit of fun and there's a whole Simpsons audience out there, man. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So we'll see where that series goes. So what got you into cocktails in the first place? That's a good question. So I've always been sort of a home cocktail enthusiast and was just sort of tinkering with some of the basics. But I think what really got me trying to take it more seriously was taking a couple local classes. So I'm in San Francisco and there's a place called Bourbon and Branch. Anyone who's familiar with the San Francisco cocktail scenes heard of this. I and mean, they do all these cocktail classes, Cocktails 101, how to build a sour cocktail, you know, the right ratio of spirit to sweet to sour and kind of like getting me a little more confident with some of the fundamentals. And from there, just had a blast with it, making cocktails at home. I was like the friend who knew how to make like nice cocktails at home and who invested in it. So I'd always have people coming over to my place and, you know, you save a good amount of money if you're staying in and drinking a couple cocktails instead of going out first, but then, you know, always going out and trying out the local craft cocktail bars around in the city. So it was just sort of an evolution of uh, trying to learn more and um, getting some basic instruction to uh, kick it off. Oh, that's really cool. And I bet your friends didn't mind kind of an elevation of the chem, uh, you know, the cocktail game in their group. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Moving beyond just sort of the, you know, the vodka sodas that they were drinking out in the bars and, oh, actually, this is like a nice, like interesting whiskey and pair it with an old fashioned using just fresh ingredients and so it was um it was definitely a change of pace for them and kind of kept me going nice and do you have like a default cocktail that it's like you had a heart you had a long day and all you want to do is go home and like you know what i'm gonna make myself a cocktail what's your desert island cocktail yeah it's a good question it, i think it probably changes every month i'm definitely like a lot of people on sort of a mezcal kick right now and uh so one of my favorites is a, a mezcal Negroni. It's basically swapping out the gin for mezcal. It's it's wonderful. So that, for me, that's that's great. I'm actually generally into swapping out gin for mezcal in a lot of cocktails. It seems to work really well. And so I've just been doing a lot of that these days. But if I have to make cocktails for a, a group, which... You know, anyone who's into cocktails tends to be like thrown into the default bartender mode when it comes to people's parties that they throw. So like I often default to the mules, you know, I get some ginger beer, some lime and maybe uh, vodka and some whiskey and I make Moscow mules, Kentucky mules for people. It's just the easiest thing to scale and make for a lot of people in bulk and uh, and everyone loves it. So that's my go-to in, in that kind of situation. Yeah, I find that uh, the mule as like a cocktail family is a good kind of gateway into craft cocktails. You tell them, it's like, oh, man, that sounds like a fancy name and, you know, all that stuff. And they drink and they're like, hey, this is really good. Yeah, it's good. It's a crowd pleaser. So it's usually pretty reliable in groups. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So now if you could work on like any technology for your channel, as far as like, I think when we met up, we had drinks at, I think it was Treasury a little while ago. And uh, we were talking about some different techniques and different equipment and stuff. If you like sky's the limit they're gonna grant any wish you want 
Is there any piece of equipment you'd love just to get your hands on and start tinkering with and seeing if you can use it in cocktails? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I've always wished that, you know, liquid nitrogen was a little easier to come by. That's There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with that. Actually, one thing I really want to get my hands on is my centrifuge to do some cool separations of, of juices and all that. But they tend to be really expensive. So I don't know, maybe, maybe there'll be a cheap, cheaper version of that coming out soon. But yeah, I think, I think probably liquid nitrogen playing with that a little bit more and, uh, and seeing some of the fun stuff you can do around manipulating ice and, and liquids around that. I think that would be a lot of fun. That would be very cool. Yeah. And uh, centrifuge too. I mean, that's, that would be amazing to get your hands on one just to, like you said, to kind of clarify some stuff out and, but yeah, they're, they're, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. I think I did see... Dave Arnold was doing like a Kickstarter on one that maybe was a little more reasonable, but yeah, I haven't uh, haven't seen that in the market yet. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll send me one and I can play around with it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that would be a, that'd be amazing. <laughs> oh man, so that's really cool, man. So it sounds like you're always kind of working on something, and this whole uh, the Simpsons in the movie thing as kind of a focus for cocktails, man. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's sort of you know it's sort of working a different angle. I think I'm always trying to try out new ways to keep people entertained on the channel. I've been doing some live videos as well, just using my mobile phone. And I actually did a live ice carving a couple of weeks ago. So I was using the, um, you know, Camper English's like directional freezing method of, of creating clear ice in a small cooler. And then sort of, you basically create that block of ice and carve it up, right? And so I basically set up a camera and did a live uh, filming of carving up some clear ice cubes and got tons of people joining, tuning in to watch that. And, you know, you get all sorts of crazy YouTube comments from crazy people on the internet, but uh, it was still a good amount of fun and I'll probably be doing some more of those. Nice, man. Yeah, that's something I haven't really ventured into with the, the live videos. Now, did you do like just squares or did you do like, I know I've seen a couple on Camper's blog where he makes like a Death Star, for example. <laughs> yeah, he is the uh, the ice master, so I, I don't I don't come anywhere near his, his level. But I mostly stick to, yeah, basic, you know, big cubes for, you know, like an old fashioned. I also like the ice sort of sticks to put into like a highball eyeball glass. Those are fun. Uh, so those are pretty easy things you can do when, when carving it up. But yeah, don't get too crazy. No, no like Japanese ice carving or anything like that. You know, I tried it once and my hand got so cold. Like I tried to do the whole diamond thing and uh, a sphere at one point. And I was just like, you know what? I can leave it to the pros because I don't have the tolerance for that anymore. Yeah. I feel like those guys must have like, like lost all sensitivity in their fingers because your hand gets so cold and I'm like, I'm just going to like slice my finger and not even feel it because I'm completely numb. So yeah, <laughs> I leave it to the pros. Yeah. And I've seen a couple uh, of videos of guys doing ice carving and it's not a, like a short process. It's a good couple of minutes to, to get it right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, making clear ice already is a long enough pro process as it is. I don't know if I'm going to spend another... 20 minutes trying to carve the perfect shape. Maybe one day, then maybe that'll be the evolution. There you go. I feel like there's a market for that. Like somebody coming up with a really great way of making clear ice and not have to go through that whole process on a, a consumer level, not so much on the uh, the bar level, because I think there's a couple of machines that do that, but uh, somebody that do it really well at home. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Someone should come up with that. <laughs> Excellent, man. So uh, last question, where's your favorite haunts in the city, man? Oh, yeah. Great question. Great question. So, see, I'm a big fan of Trick Dog here in San Francisco. I love, I love what they're doing over there. Treasury, where you and I met up, is one of my local favorites. It's, it's right near where I work, so I'm always popping over there. Pabu is also a nice one. They do some interesting stuff at Pabu. And got to give love to Smuggler's Cove. It's classic. Whenever I'm in the mood for a tiki, it's great to have that right around the corner. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, we're so lucky in, in San Francisco. There's just so many great places to go and so many people doing interesting things. Oh, Horse Feather is another great one. I love what they're doing with wine cocktails here. I think I want to do like a whole series on using wine and sort of these low-grade, low low-proof alcohol cocktails. So those guys are doing some good stuff. Nice. That's, that's one I haven't heard of. Uh, I'll have to go check that one out for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool, man. So uh, just kind of as a, a timely thing, James Beard Award released their nominations today and Smuggler's Cove was on there for their book they released. They're in the running for a James Beard nomination for that book. That's fantastic. Yeah, they deserve it. That book's great. Yeah, and they're just nice people, man. And they make a mean tiki drink over there. <laughs> yeah, two of those and it's game over. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So 
And uh, I know the one last thing that we talked about a little while ago was the fact that you're doing a Tales talk this year. Am I correct? Yeah, I recently found out I was accepted to uh, it's called a said talk, which is sort of a TED talk style uh, talk they're doing now at Tales of the Cocktail. So it's going to be yeah about 10, 15 minutes uh, on stage. I'm going to be talking about how you can use video to grow your brand online um, and really how you easy it is right now. I mean, I, I literally use my iPhone and my earbuds to record, edit, and narrate all my videos. Like, it's really easy. Just get some good lighting and you can express your creativity. And video is really where the future of online content is going. And I want to teach people you know, my story and, and how they can use it to grow their brand. So yeah, if you're going to be at Tales, definitely try to look me up and love to Love to meet you. Yeah, and said talks for anybody that's not familiar with with the format, it's a couple different presenters, all focused, um, kind of roundtabling one specific idea, and unless they've changed it over the years. But I always love the format of it. You know, it's very engaging. People can ask questions in the room, which is not always typical of a lot of these seminars. But the said talk, man, that's it's a lot of fun, and hopefully Julie and I will get a chance to go down there because I would love to learn more about it myself. Yeah, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's my first tales and. And uh, I hear it's a great time and I'm pretty excited. Well, definitely uh, rest up and start to ramp up your alcohol tolerance now. You're, it's a marathon, man. I'm telling you. Oof, I've heard some stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're going to have so much fun, man. It's always, it's one of those things that it comes around every year. And if you go, you're super excited. And, you know, if you unfortunately miss it this year, you see it all over Facebook. And you're just like, oh, man, next year I got to go. You know, start to go through withdrawals in the whole nine yards. Yeah, I know. That's that's what I've heard. And you're also in that, that New Orleans heat down there. And I think it just adds an extra layer of just like, oh, <laughs> rough. Yeah, it's and throw a bunch of booze in there. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. Cool. So definitely, um, if any of you bartenders are down in New Orleans for Tales of the Cocktail this year, definitely check out his uh, said talks video to enhance your brand and also his YouTube channel, Cocktail Chemistry and Instagram at Cocktail Chemistry as well. So thank you so much, Nick, for your time and helping us and definitely always appreciate talking to you, man. Yeah, always a pleasure, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Of course, man. And hopefully we'll uh, get a chance to do this again, man. Absolutely. Talk soon. Okay. Another huge thank you to Nick for joining us on the podcast. He's done an amazing job at introducing craft and fancy cocktail techniques to regular people, so we may just get more customers in the door thanks to him. Once again, head on over to the show notes at mixologytalk.com slash 98 to see some great videos and catch the links to his YouTube channel and social pages. Cheers! Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.